Good morning, church family. Pastor Brett here, and to visitors, welcome to our devotional channel here at Rockhampton Baptist. The word enthusiasm has an interesting history. At its Latin and Greek roots, it carries the idea of a frenzy. The etymology of the word conveys the idea of divine zeal, as if you're possessed by some god. Now, in the 17th century, the Puritans were labelled with word, this word, but it wasn't a compliment. To be enthusiastic meant to have excessive religious emotion, and they were thought to be seen. As, they were thought to be conceited as they looked down upon others because they had special revelation of God. And so, for 17th century Christians, enthusiasm, or the word, was an excess that would be short-lived. I think we see that in the story of the triumphal entry of Jesus. I want to read the story in Luke chapter 19. When he reached the place where the road started down the Mount of Olives, all of his followers began to shout and sing as they walked along, praising God for all the wonderful miracles they had seen. Blessings on the King who comes in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in highest heaven. But some of the Pharisees among the crowd said, Teacher, rebuke your followers for saying things like that. He replied, If they keep quiet, the stones along the road would burst into cheers. But as they come closer to Jerusalem, he saw the city ahead and began to weep. How I wish today that you of all people would understand the way to peace. But now it is too late and peace is hidden from your eyes. Before long, your enemies will build ramparts against your walls and encircle you and close in on you from every side. They will crush you into the ground and your children with you. Your enemies will not leave a single stone in place because you did not accept your opportunity for salvation. Yesterday, we celebrated the Palm Sunday the story of the triumphal entry. And there was great enthusiasm amongst the crowds, shouting, singing, praising God while walking along. Here comes the king. All of these messianic references. And the Bible tells us in a couple of other versions of this story that there was a great stir in Jerusalem. You can imagine it, can't you? Here is the guy that's been walking around, fairly well known, doing miracles, healing the sick, casting out demons, cleansing lepers, even raising people from the dead. He rides into Jerusalem on a donkey, so very messianic, prophetic fulfillment here. Could this be the Messiah? Is deliverance about to come to our great nation? Now, there were skeptics in the crowd, of course, the Pharisees. They tried to silence the people. Maybe because they were nervous of the Romans. You know, someone's marching triumphantly into the city claiming to be king. But I think because the messianic terms, they had already rejected the fact that he was the Messiah. But Jesus said even the stones would cry out. This was a triumphal moment full of enthusiasm, a special time, a fulfillment of prophecy. But the crowds didn't realise what was in the mind of Jesus as he descended the hill into Jerusalem. In Jesus' mind, this was not a moment of deliverance. This was a moment of judgment. Verse 42. How I wish today that you of all people would understand the way to peace. But now it is too late and peace is hidden from your eyes. There was great excitement in the crowd. But this was a terrible moment. The prophet Malachi speaks of this moment as well in Malachi chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. Look, I am sending my messenger and he will prepare the way before me. Then the Lord you are seeking will suddenly come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant who you look for so eagerly is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But you will not be able to endure it when he comes. Who will be able to stand? And face him when he appears, for he will be like a blazing fire that refines metal, like a strong soap that bleaches clothes. 
the crowds were crying out in enthusiasm, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. A week later, they were shouting, crucify him. Their enthusiasm was short-lived. Be wary of seeking only the good emotions from God whilst resisting the difficult things he might have to say to you. Following Jesus is not about feeling good. It's about being transformed. My prayer is that your enthusiasm would not be short-lived. Let's pray. We recognise, Lord, your word comes to transform, to change and to grow us. Lord, we have an appetite for sweets and not meat. And I pray, Lord, that we would learn from this terrible moment where a great judgment was coming, even amidst the great feelings of enthusiasm. May we not be fickle, praising you one moment, doubting you the next. Lift us out of that. Lord, may we walk with you in genuine devotion. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So keep walking with God and keep talking with him and let him talk back to you as you read the Bible. If he does speak to you, trust and obey. Keep looking for opportunities to bless others. Happy Easter. We'll see you soon. Thank you.